Hello and welcome to Minster Memorial Field here at Minster High School for tonight's regional quarterfinal matchup between the New Bremen Cardinals and the Minster Wildcats. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert and Gil. Week two of the playoffs are upon us, and there should be no surprise that the MAC is still standing strong as we have two MAC powerhouses in the Minster Wildcats and the New Bremen Cardinals. New Bremen didn't quite have the regular season that they're accustomed to, especially over the last five, six years. Finished the season four and six, but and ended up getting into the playoffs thanks to this new expansion as a 13 seed but then just absolutely dominated last week. Ends up with the rematch of a Minster team that a few weeks ago did not go their way either. Well, it was, you know, that game was played on the superstitious Friday the 13th, and like you said, it was Minster just put it on them at 40 to 14, but this is a new part of the season. Both teams are zero and zero. Both of these coaches do a really good job with their kids. They know how to win. They know how to do the things necessary to win. And I think, you know, there's going to be some changes that's going to be made with New Bremen's game plan, and it's going to be a chess match between two really good coaches and Coach Whiting and also Coach Bowers. Coach, yeah, Coach Smith. Yeah, they're going to do a really good job against one another tonight. So as you saw, Minster kicked off. New Bremen received the short kickoff. Weren't able to get much on that opening return, but they're going to take the shotgun, run it up the middle. Here's Steeman as he is going to find a nice space there that time as Tiemann got up and got the first first down of the game. That is going to be our first Busher Electric first down. Riddler on the stop for the Wildcats, but not until, like you said, partner, a first down. That's a nice game there by New Bremen, a little quarterback draw action. You know, and I think that this opening drive is insanely important for New Bremen. You know, we mentioned, you know, obviously it was just a few short weeks ago that these two teams matched up, and that game did not go New Bremen's way. It was a lopsided victory for the Wildcats, 40-14, to 14, as you had mentioned, Gil. So I think even if they don't necessarily come away with points here on this first drive, to come out, have some success, pick up a couple of first downs, you know, and obviously you want to put it in the end zone. But if you don't, you have to at least show something to yourself that you can stand with these yeah, guys. Yeah, establish some momentum with, you know, a little confidence level with your offense. And like you said, time management and, and take some time off the clock and gain some yards. Teaming in the shotgun, he's going to hand it off, coming towards the near side. And he's going to be upended at the 50-yard line. Looked like he was going to have some space that time. Uh, but ran out of space and is going to get dropped. It's going to bring up third and five. Big play there by Caleb Sharp. Got him by the ankles. If he doesn't get him, he may have found his way to the first down marker, but a big open field tackle got him just enough of him to knock him off balance. And I believe that was Trevor Schaefer on the carry for New Bremen. He's in the backfield along with Tiemann. Demon waits in the shotgun as he will all night long. He's going to let this one air out. Goes to the far sideline. A bobble, but was completed. It's going to bring up fourth and short for New Bremen. They're going to have a decision to make here early in the first. Big play out there on the boundary by Minster. He got about three on there, but he's still looking at a fourth and three. Nice stop by the Wildcats. So New Bremen decides that they're going to punt this one away. Punt is off clean. Minster back, going to let this one bounce. Takes a cardinal bounce, and it's going to roll all the way to the 10-yard line where New Bremen will down it, and Minster will come out for their first possession of the game. So now it's going to be Minster's opportunity as the defense at least got a, got a little bit surprised there early as New Bremen was able to pick up the first down, but then they stood tall. And now the offense is going to come out and have an opportunity to see if they can't get something going here on their first possession. Yeah, that big first down there by New Bremen, like you also said, they, they bent their defense a little bit, but they didn't break. Minster back in the shotgun. And send a man in motion. Going to go to the air. Coming out of the backfield. That pass is complete. Nice gain on first down along the sidelines. 
Charlie Smeezing all the way down to the 35 yard line. A huge pickup on first down and the first Busher Electric first down for the Minster Wildcats. And, and this is what Minster missed last year. You know, unfortunately, you know, they lost their quarterback to an ACL tear, missed basketball season, tried to come back and just couldn't do it. But you noticed him with that quick release and then the burst of speed there down the sideline teaming, you know, with that touchdown saving tackle, but great execution by Minster and uh, led by Steffi. So quarterback James Niemeyer in the shotgun. I'll take this one. It's time he's going to hand this one off. Right off the right side, a short gain for the Wildcats. Good job by teaming right there, stepping in there. I believe that was Connor Schmusing on the carry. Luthman also on the stop for the Cardinals. So short gain of two brings up second and eight for Minster. And New Bremen looking for a big defensive play here. Would love to be able to keep this to a negative play if they can. Maybe get a little bit of most momentum back. Niemeyer sends a man in motion. Schwederman comes this arrest. Going to be a hand up off the middle. Connor Schmeezing takes it off that left side. Had some space. Able to pick up about six on the play. Bring up third and short. Yeah, really patient right there by Schwederman. Or excuse me, I'm sorry. Brought down by Grant Dick and Teeman. Nice little move there by the running back. Mr. Schmeezing with some hesitation there as he found his way. Got about, what, five, six yards there. Putting him in a... Long third and three. Now Niemeyer taking his time, getting everybody ready for this third down. Niemeyer's going to hand it off one more time. Here's Schmeezing right up the middle. And he, I believe, is going to be stopped short. So you're going to have fourth and short right outside of the 35-yard line for the Wildcats. And you got to imagine that Minster's going to go for this one. I would, I would think so, yeah. Owen Riddler on the Rindler on the stop, excuse me. 6'2, 175 pound outside linebacker for New Bremen. Now this is where they've got to play disciplined football defensively. Don't jump if there's a cadence call here. Niemeyer waits in the shotgun, flanked by Connor and Charlie Schmeezing. Going to hand this one off to Connor. Connor up right over the middle. Absorbs the contact, picks up four yards, and that's going to be a Busher Electric first down. Busher Electric is a full-service electrical contractor servicing the area communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electric needs. Teaming on the stop there for New Bremen, but not until that first down occurred, partner. So big fourth down conversion for the Wildcats as they continue this march downfield. Niemeyer waits for the snap. This time he's got three out wide. Connor Smeezing in the backfield. He's going to – no, it was a great RPO that time. And you see Niemeyer pulled that one back and tried to complete that one across the middle, but it gets knocked down for an incompletion. Boy, Noah Kelly putting the heat, bearing down on him right there. Steffi took a heck of a shot. Threw that thing sidearm, a little bit of Patrick Mahomes in it. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to fit it into a tight window. He sure did. About got her picked off. Did a great job of disguising it as well as Niemeyer played the RPO almost perfect. It looked like Connor had that one coming out of it. But Minster not able to connect on first down. So second and ten. Two wide receivers out right, two in the backfield along with Niemeyer. And we're going to have a false start. I believe this one's going to be on the offense as you saw – I believe it was Charlie Schmeezing take a, take a jump. And we saw a couple guys on the line as <laughs> That's well. That's what I was going to say. It was more than one, wasn't it? So now going to put them behind schedule a little bit as we have some negative yardage for the first time for the Wildcats. Going to bring up second and long. Yeah, there shouldn't be anybody in the stadium that I'm complaining about that call. I mean, that one, <laughs> there was more than one that moved. Made the job for John Terry very pretty easy. Second and 15 for the Wildcats. Niemeyer takes a snap, going to hand it off. 
Schmeezy works through some traffic, cuts back up to the middle, and he's going to get cut off after a short gain. And it's going to bring up third and long for Minster. Evers on the stop along with Johnny Heitkamp. Good job stepping in the hole right there. Puts what Minster in the third and long situation. So Connor Smeezy, we've seen him carry the ball quite a bit here on this first drive. He has 129 rush attempts coming into this game, a game for 635 yards. He's got 11 touchdowns on the season. And they're looking for a big play here. Niemeyer is going to roll out. Looks to air it out. Has the completion. Nice job moving to space. Ends up finding his receiver, Cole Richard, wide open as Richard is able to get this one down to about the seven yard line and move the sticks for first and goal. Well, I'll tell you, that's a nice catch there by that young man. Got those hands extended, soft, looked him in, pushed out of bounds over here on the near side by Hayden Zeller. So another Busher electric first down for the Wildcats as they find themselves in the Burke Petroleum red zone. Niemeyer takes the snap, hands it off to Smeezing, tries to bounce it outside, but he is going to be met by a host of Cardinals as they able to stop him for a short loss. Hayden Zeller with the first hit, standing him up, coming in with his teammates to finish it off. Big loss of two. Now second and goal coming from the 10-yard line. As Minster has done a nice job when they find themselves in these long yardage situations. As the line has been pretty dominant and given Niemeyer all sorts of time. Niemeyer looking for somebody, throws it out and has this one completed, but great defense by the Cardinals. And no, it's going to get waved off. He dropped it as he got hit. So a, still a great play by the Cardinal defense to make this one third and ten, or third and, excuse me, it's going to be third and goal, but it is going to be a long third and goal from the 15-yard line. Yeah, nice hit there by Kale Tangeman. That ball was delivered and on the, the spot, but got jarred away by New Bremen defensive back. Yes, yeah, Ste Steffi did a good job getting his feet set right there. Well, oh, actually, it's Niemeyer, isn't it? That's my fault. So Niemeyer takes the snap. He's going to go to the air. Rolls to his right. Trying to find some space. Going to throw it last second. Trying to get it into the hands of Connor Niemeyer in the end zone. But we do have a flag on the play. We'll see if Minster maybe gets a reprieve here. Actually, there's two on the play. There's one on this near side, too. I don't know if they got him for crossing the line of scrimmage. And it is going to be an offensive holding. And Niemeyer that time let that one go past the line of scrimmage. So two penalties on the Minster Wildcats. We'll see which one that they're going to take. Because the forward pass would be a loss of down. So New Bremen could point. force this to be a fourth and uh, 15 from the 15, or they can take the offense or the offensive holding, push them back 10 more yards, and that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to go ahead and take the illegal forward pass, loss of down, so you lose the yardage, and now it's going to be fourth down. I think I'm talking to Troy Aikman here. <laughs> Troy is on top of this thing. That's a great job. No, I just want to apologize. I, I owe an apology to uh, Mr. Niemeyer. I thought that was Steffi, and I'm, evidently I'm losing my eyesight. Steffi's in 12, and Niemeyer's in 15. So I apologize to that young man and his family. This is going to bring up fourth and goal from the 20-yard line. A long way to go to get into the end zone. We'll see what Minster dials up here. Niemeyer sends a man in motion. Takes a snap. He's going to drop back. Lots of time, he airs this one out. Connor, sneezing was wide open, holds on to it, 
but nowhere near the goal line. So that is going to be a turnover on downs and a great job by the New Bremen defense to hold when they had the shadow of the end zone on their back. I'll tell you, that's a heck of a catch right there. Caleb Keller, you know, just laid the wood right there. And uh, that ball was hung on to, but like you said, well short of number one, the first down marker, and number two, the end zone. So nice job by New Bremen defensively. So a turnover on downs. New Bremen's going to come out, have their second opportunity with the ball. This time, though, they are deep in their own territory. they got a long way to go if they want to put some points on the board. 442 left go to go here in the first quarter. Regional, corner regional quarter final action here at Minster Memorial Field. Teeman in the backfield going to hand this one off. Oh, what a play. As Muther gets blown up in the backfield for a loss of yards. And unfortunately for New Bremen, instead of trying to get out of that end zone shadow, they're deeper into it. Wow, Adam Riddler right there. Looked like he got shot out of a can of man. He got... He, he penetrated on the football real quick, and they're lucky that you know, that wasn't a safety because he really, really closed on that ball carrier. Got him a nice solo open field tackle. Great he, play. And it looked like New Bremen had some pretty good timing as Rogan Mueller had been able to uh, be able to get that one in space. If he breaks that tackle, he has room. So great defensive play by the Wildcats. Team in now in his own end zone. Going to keep it himself, has to get out, just oh, gets across the goal line, and he takes a brutal hit at the one-yard line, and New Bremen right now going the wrong direction on this drive. Noah Schwederman coming up, got the shoulder square. Great fundamental tackle right there. And again, very fortunate that that ball's inside the one. And that's one of those hits, too, where oh. even though Tiemann is looking forward, he sees him coming. He never saw him coming. No. It was a clean hit, but the, he just never saw that as the seas parted and the Minster defense was there for the stop. So now Tiemann, deep in his own end zone, has to be careful with the football here. Third and long. Going to go for the quick pass, gets the completion, and just gives them a little bit of space so they can get the punt off cleanly as that pass was completed to Grant Dickey. Niemeyer on the stop near side boundary. Like you said, I think they just wanted to get out of danger territory there to put themselves in a position where at least the kicker didn't have to worry about stepping out of bounds. Let's see if Minster wants to send a little extra pressure here. They're not. They're going to drop back. Punt gets off clean. This one's going to take... A good bounce for New Bremen as it crosses midfield, and it's going to be downed at the 46-47 yard line. So Minster is going to have great field position for their second possession. That first one, Gil, they were moving it. Seemed like they could do any uh, do no wrong until they got inside that red zone, and then New Bremen able to take advantage of a couple of penalties and hold them off the scoreboard. Well, the big one I think, like you said, was the loss of down. You know, it was a holding, and then turned around, and he got caught running across the line of scrimmage, and they declined that penalty, which, like you said, was a loss of down, and that uh, definitely halted the momentum for sure. So 2.56 left to go here in the opening quarter. We're still scoreless. Minster with the football. Niemeyer back in the backfield along with Charlie and Connor Smeezing. Niemeyer takes a snap, going to hand it off to Connor. He works up the middle. He's going to get taken but down, but not before he crosses midfield for a nice pickup on first down. Heidkamp and Krieg on the stop. Going to be a four-yard uh, four gain. Second and six coming up for the Wildcats. I'd like to thank tonight's instant replay. Sponsor, Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Niemeyer in the shotgun. Takes a snap. Going to look to air it out. Tries to go to a near sideline, and that one is complete. Nice job fighting for extra yards with Noah Schwederman, and that is going to be a Busher electric first down. Nice pitch and catch here. Got his feet set. Stepped into the throw. Threw a nice... Spinner right there, nice catch. Got a little extra yak there, didn't he? A couple yards after the reception. Nice pitch and catch. 
So right now we're seeing this Minster offensive line really dictate things as they are giving Niemeyer all sorts of time to throw the football. We even saw it on the last play. It ended up being the turnover on downs. Niemeyer had all the time mm -hmm. in the world, but and they were able to even get the pass complete, just couldn't get into the end zone. So Niemeyer sends Richard in motion. Going to hand it off to Smeezing. Smeezing has a big hole off the right side, able to pick up seven, eight yards on that first down carry, bring up second and short. Heidkamp on the stop. Not until he got, what, about seven, six? Oh, yeah. It's going to be a seven-yard gain to bring up second and three as Minster right now marching back down the field just like they did on their first drive. Quick first quarter, huh? Yes, it is. My 135 goodness. and counting. We are already almost a full quarter down. Schwederman goes in motion. Niemeyer takes the shotgun snap, hands it off to Smeezing. Smeezing bounces off a couple of defenders, ends up getting dropped back after about a two-yard gain. It'll be third and one coming up with 115 left to go here in the quarter. I think he tricked you, partner. I think that was knee camp, or... Uh, Niemeyer, yeah, Niemeyer, Niemeyer kept, kept his own it. game. Yeah. I'll tell you what, he's been real good with those <laughs> he RPOs. He, he's already got he's, me that. If That was the second time tonight where he made it look very convincing. Oh, and yeah. It takes more than one just to do that as Connor Smeezing doing his job, making it look like he's taking that handoff as well. So you got to give uh, New Bremen some props, able to sniff that one out. Oh, yeah, because there was two of them up here in the press box that thought that the ball was given to the running back. And Niemeyer. Hands this one off to Smeezing. Smeezing jumps through a couple of arm tackles, gets pushed back, but not before he picks up another Busher Electric first down. Krieg on the stop along with Schaefer, Owen Rindler. Not until big first down. Connor Smeezing continuing to move the football well on the ground for Minster. New Bremen has not have has had not not excuse me has not had much of an answer for him here in this opening quarter. I'll get it out eventually. That's okay. <laughs> Niemeyer takes a shotgun snap. Going to go to the air. Throws it towards the near sideline. Same play as what we saw earlier. It worked then, so they're going to try it again. As Noah Sweeterman able to bring that one in, he's going to get taken down at right around the 15 yard line. And that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. Fast first quarter, Minster Wildcats on the move, trying to see if they can't get the first points of the game. We're going to step aside. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Speedway Lanes in New Bremen. They bring family and friends together with bowling fun and great food for everyone. Second quarter just about underway. Niemeyer waits on the snap. As Minster is looking to finish this drive, which they couldn't do in that first quarter. And Connor Smusing is able to carry this one over the line of scrimmage, over the first down line, and move the sticks for another Busher Electric first down. Noah Kelly on the stop, along with Johnny Heitkamp. Yeah, he's going to get a lot of touches tonight, isn't he? Well, and right now, why not? You know, it doesn't seem like New Bremen's uh, been able to stop him too much. He's having and a lot of success moving the ball on the ground. No reason to get away from what's working. Yeah, four or five yards at a pop, huh? Minster with a fresh set of downs. Neymar going to pull this one down, call his own number. He brings it up and going to pick up just a few. Uh, short gain on first down. Evers on the stop. Going to be second and eight for Minster. Really the first time we've seen a true drop back QB draw at a Niemeyer. They've kind of disguised that for the most part with those RPOs. That time a true quarterback run. 
Not able to get quite as much as I'm sure they were hoping for. Now he's got four wide receivers. Got Connor sneezing in the backfield with him. Going to keep it, go to the air. Going to drop it over the top. And this one is going to go all the way in. A great completion to number one, Caleb Kaus. Wow, what a pass. Letting just enough to get his fingertips on it. In stride, and he found his way to the end zone. So Caleb Cowles has the first Speedway Lanes touchdown as Minster goes on top, six to nothing. So now as we see a lot of these different type of extra point formations, how they get themselves lined up, and now Minster runs back into the middle, the traditional setup, as Cowles is gonna stay in there to see if he can't get the extra point. Kick is up. And it is good. So the Minster Wildcats, after not being able to cash in on their first drive, make it happen here early in the second. They're on top, seven to nothing. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's Instant Replay is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Tonight's first downs are brought to you by Busher Electric. Busher Electric is a full-service electrical contractor servicing the area communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electric needs. 10.27 left to go here in the first half. Minster gets the scoring started finally. So they are on the board, 7-0, thanks to the connection from James Niemeyer to Caleb Kaus. Going to have another short kick, and it's going to get fielded by New Bremen. See, New Bremen with a little bit of space runs out to that far side as Grant Dick was trying to see if he couldn't create on that kickoff. As New Bremen is going to come out, led by Aaron Tiemann. Connor Smeezing coming up. Making the solo tackle here for Minster on that kickoff. Young man's going to be a busy boy tonight, isn't he, on both sides of it, special teams. So now Tiemann back in the shotgun. He has been the all-everything for the Cardinals. As this one's going to hit the ground, and Minster falls on it as they are going to get the first turnover of the game. Some miscommunication as it looked like that was Aaron Tiemann in the backfield. The hat got crossed up with his running back. The ball hit the turf, and Minster jumps on it. 10-13 left to go here in the second as Minster feels the momentum firmly on their side. And you got to think that they may try to take a shot right here to see if they can't go ahead uh, by double digits on the scoreboard. Yeah, they have a win down vertically, so to speak, down the middle of the field. Just curious if they're going to set something up there, too, the way Niemeyer's throwing the ball right now. Now Niemeyer sends a man in motion. Sweeterman settles. And they are going to go to the air. They're going to go deep. Here's Sweeterman as the, he has that one completed across the 20-yard line into the red zone. And Minster's feeling it. They do take the opportunity to try to go deep. And they get another Busher Electric first down. Dickey on the stop for New Bremen. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Yeah, so, he doesn't mess around, partner. When he throws that ball, it gets there, and it gets there quick. You know, and it doesn't hurt that he seems to have all the time that he needs oh, back absolutely. there. Oh, absolutely. He's the getting line. that protection. Yeah, that O-line is doing phenomenal here in the early going. Meyer looks towards the sideline. He's got three wide receivers stacked on that far side. They're going to keep it on the one-on-one -on, -one on the near, and that one's going to be in for another Minster touchdown as Dylan Heitkamp takes it in. And that is back-to-back -back Speedway Lanes touchdowns for the Wildcats. Little stop-and-go action, little pump fake, got the DB to react. Great, great call, great execution by the Wildcats. Like you said, they took advantage quick-like on that miscue by New Bremen. Start this quarter, it was nothing, nothing. 
two and a half minutes roughly have gone by and Minster right now pending the Caleb Kaus extra point. As that one is up and good to make it official. It is 14 nothing, and it is all Wildcats right now. We will step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Burke Petroleum. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. Contact them at 800-776-3097. Minster's going to kick off one more time here in this half as they are on top, 14-0. And this one's going to be another squib kick that New Bremen is just going to fall on. And, you know, partner, we were talking off air about the last New Bremen possession. And, you know, I think we both thought that initially, I, I thought maybe my eyes were playing tricks on me, but I, we think number 11 was in there on playing quarterback I on that fumble. I think he was too. So that was number 11, Pierce Whitlatch, had came in to be quarterback. Not sure if there was an injury that happened to Aaron Tiemann or not. Trying to look here to see if Tiemann is, is back. What, no, I think it is Whitlatch. Whitlock. Yeah, I think Teeman got dinged up in that first series of the game down here like he rolled up an ankle. So Whitlatch takes the snap. Almost another miscommunication that time, but a great job being able to make something out of nothing as he hands that off to number 36. That is Trevor Schaefer. Schaefer has over 300 yards rushing, second on the team behind Teeman. And, you know, it is uh, – it's no small thing that Aaron Tiemann is out of this game. He is the all-everything for New Bremen. Oh, yes. Over 700 yards passing, over 700 yards rushing. He has done it all for the Cardinals, so we'll see what Whitlatch is able to do. This one's going to be another handoff. It's going to be secured. It's going to be ran out of bounds was Rogan Mueller. Nice job by Minster stringing the play out. For a second there, it almost looked like Muther was looking to line up for a pass. Not sure if maybe that's what he was doing or if he was just trying to secure it a little bit tighter. You know, you have to wonder with Teeman being out if New Bremen is going to have to try to get a little bit, uh, don't want to say fancy with what they're doing, but maybe try to see if they can't get a couple of trick plays here or there. And you know, I'm sure that they are hoping that they will get their star quarterback back here before too long. Third and long for the Cardinals as we have a flag as it's going to be a delay of game as Whitlatch does not get the snap off in time. That's going to push him back five yards. You know, those are just the type of penalties that you see out of the inexperienced quarterbacks haven't had it taken a lot of snaps. As he's in there right now looking up and finding that play clock just wasn't something he was thinking about right there. Yeah, my eyes are roaming the sidelines. I'm looking for Tiemann, and I can't see him on the sidelines. There is somebody sitting on the bench in between the markers, but I'm not quite sure if that's him or not. So now Whitlatch, third and long for the Cardinals. Sends Muther in motion, is going to hand it off to him. He's going to try to work through some holes, but there's nothing there as the Wildcat defense was all over that play. Drops him for a loss. And the Cardinals are going to have to punt it away. Caleb Sharp and Charlie Schmeezing on the stop right there. Apparently, rumor is that he uh, took a shot to the head area. Well, and you wonder if that happened on that play at the goal line where we saw the Wildcat defense come through and he took that big hit. It did oh, look like that one point. was up high. Good point. Oh, they're faking it. And they're going to look for the fake. He's running, running out of room, though. He's not going to pick this one up. We do have a flag down. But I'm not sure that that's going to go the Cardinals' way. John Keller right there, the senior. And it does. Initial indication does look like that one might be against Minster. So we'll see. We'll see what happens here if New Bremen's going to have to re-kick. That's what it looks like they're lining up to do is we are going to have a re-kick. So... 
haven't seen the call yet. Not sure what it was, but it looks like it was only a five-yard penalty, which isn't going to be enough for the first down. So New Bremen going to get an opportunity here, okay. so which might be a lucky play as you saw them just try to sneak it that time, didn't pick it up. Now I'd imagine we'd see a clean punt. Legal substitution was the call. So New Bremen decides just to send this one downfield. A nice high kick is going to go out of bounds right around the 25-yard line. And that's where Minster will go back to work. They're on top, 14-0, 8.28 left to go here in the half. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So now Minster coming off of back-to-back -back offensive possessions that ended in the end zone. Go back to work as they look to see if they can extend this lead. Niemeyer takes the snap. You're going to hand it off right up the middle as this time the carry is going to go to Justin Bergman as Bergman had all sorts of room and he picks up a Busher Electric first down. Yeah, he, he got head up ahead of steam right there and kicked it in second gear and if it wasn't for Heitkamp grabbing him by the jersey, he was on his way for an awful long run. Nice run by that young man. So we've seen Minster do a nice job of coming out into multiple different uh, formations. It really kept New Bremen guessing as they're going to go to the air here. As this one is just out of the hands of Dylan Heitkamp. Or no, excuse me, looking at the wrong roster. No, I was correct. I know what I'm doing over here. It's not my first game, Gilly. That it's okay, Dylan, my eyes, <laughs> Dylan my eyes lied to me for about five minutes. <laughs> And that was Dylan Heitkamp. He had the touchdown the last time uh, Minster had the football. That time, though, not able to hang on as that one's going to fall for an incomplete. Anyway, that's one of them he'd like to have back. Yeah, they he had, had that one. Yard, and they had he? that one set up nicely as if Heitkamp was able to hold on to that one. This one's going to be a handoff up the middle. This time it's Bergman. As Bergman crosses the 45-yard line, getting taken down right around the 46 to bring up third and short. Evers on the stop. Called Minster. him quite a bit tonight. Minster now going with a little bit of tempo here. Not wanting to let New Bremen be able to substitute in. Niemeyer takes the snap, going to hand it off. Here's Bergman one more time as he's able to pick up a Busher Electric first down as he crosses midfield. Boy, what a kick out block right there by Charlie Schmeezing, allowing that running back to go right off his backside. Big gain there for a first down. So a fresh set of downs for the Wildcats as they are in the New Bremen territory. Niemeyer waits in the shotgun. As Connor Schmeezing back in the game, back there with him. No, excuse me, that's Bergman. This one's going to get passed out to Sweeterman, though. Sweeterman able to connect. He's going to get taken down after a short gain to bring up second and six. Tangeman on the stop. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Zeller is six foot five. I don't know how he missed that ball. That was a heck of a throw out here because that had to go whistling by his ear hole. Yeah, Niemeyer had to find a little bit of space there, had just enough for the lane in the completion. So second down coming up for the Wildcats. Niemeyer takes the handoff, going to drop back, lets it air out, going to go deep. As Sweeterman drops oh, it into Sweeterman's hand, and he is not able to hold on. If Sweeterman can squeeze that one, that is a walk-in touchdown. You know, there are times, no matter what level you're playing football at, Gil, 
sometimes you're almost too open. And oh, that's yeah. kind of what happened with Sweeterman. I think he realized he's open. This is easy, easy touchdown. And next thing he knows, concentration's gone, ball's on the ground, and it's just a harmless incompletion. Well, I was curious when they were going to attack the vertical route down the seam. And, but I'll tell you, that was a heck of a shot that he took. Owen Riddler put a heck of a shot on that young man in the backfield, and he still threw that thing on a dime. And like you said, that's one of those peekaboos where you get, you just got to secure it. And, and we're going to have a flag. I believe we're going to have defensive offsides potentially. As nope, got to delay a game. Delay a game, actually. So penalty for the Wildcats, going to push him back five yards. Look like maybe number 83, Hayden Zeller from New Bremen, when as he was coming back down that line of scrimmage and maybe lined up in that neutral zone. But he had done a nice job to make sure he stayed back. It actually might be fortunate for Minster that they got <laughs> yeah. the penalty because he was coming free and clear to Niemeyer. And I think Mr. Niemeyer <laughs> saw him <laughs> out of the corner of his eyes too. So now we've seen this triple formation of the wide receivers at the far sideline a couple times. This time they're going to take a shot, trying to set up the screen. Oh, great and play. And New Bremen does a great job to blow that one up. Drops him short, if anything. Actually might have lost a yard on that play. And it's going to be fourth and long at the 50. And we'll see what Minster wants to do. As you see, they're kind of looking over to the sidelines, and they are going to send the punt team out. I don't think people realize just how tough a play that was by Caleb Keller. He took on not one guy, but two, and got past both of them and made an open field tackle. Great play by that young man. So a nice stand by the new Bremen defense as they were able to shut down Minster and give themselves an opportunity here. They're going to fair catch. And now the new Bremen offense coming out. And looks like this may be Whitlatch's game the rest of the way, as I still don't see teaming out there. And maybe I do. Uh, the difference between that 1 and 11 is getting a little difficult from our distance. Yeah, sure is. So we'll see once they break the huddle who's out there. And it is still Whitlatch. So Whitlatch in the shotgun. And at this point, you got to think that New Bremen has got to find a way to get this offense going with Whitlatch. Before they get the snap off, though, we're going to have a flag. It's going to be a false start on New Bremen. So this is not what you want when you are bringing in a new quarterback. You've got to try to find a way to limit mistakes. And right now, New Bremen just keeps compounding them. On that insult to injury, you lose your quarterback, you know, and you got to go to a backup who's probably not even sure he was going to play tonight and to be put into this situation. It'll be another handoff as Minster is all over it, and they drop New Bremen for a loss. It's going to be second and long. And Charlie Smeezing with the big play right there. Met him right. Oh, actually going to drop him for, what, two or three yard loss. Nice play by that young man. So Pierce Whitlatch is learning on the job right now, and it is not going New Bremen's way. He drew a difficult assignment here in this Minster defense. He's just trying to find a way to get himself comfortable back there. He's going to go to the air. Lobs this one. It's going to be picked off. Wasn't a great ball. You got to think that maybe New Bremen was just trying to find an easy pass, maybe to get the confidence up, and not a whole lot on that one as it went to the middle of the field, and Minster comes up with the easy turnover. Yeah, Will Kanapke stepping in right there with the interception, the junior, six foot, 165 pounds. So you never want turnovers, but you definitely don't want them when it's an instant red zone possession as this one is. As Minster will come out, they'll have first and 10 from their 20-yard line. Well, it also changes the game plan defensively for Minster. You know what I'm saying? You prepare for Teeman. You know what he's capable of doing with his legs and through the through the air. So now they can put a little bit more pressure on, you know, the running game and force New Bremen to throw it. So we'll see what Minster wants to do. They're going to keep this one on the ground. Bergman works off the right side. He has a hole. He's able to bring that one up right near the first down marker. We'll see if it was enough. 
as it looks like maybe they're going to mark him just shy of the first down. So now Minster going to be moving quickly. Boy, Charlie Schmeezing, he's going to really grade out this first half, doing a great job blocking. Bergman with the carry again, cuts it back up, looks through some tackles. He's going to pick up a Busher Electric first down as it is going to be taken down inside the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal Wildcats. And you see who is leading the way. Number seven, Charlie Schmeezing, opening up another gaping hole on that right side. Well, I'll tell you what, and how about the versatility of those Wildcats? They came out with Connor Schmeezing taking all the touches, running it through yeah. the line, and then they just decided, you know what, let's give somebody else an opportunity, and Bergman has not missed a beat as he goes right up over the top into the middle as he's going to be down maybe after a gain of one or two yards at most. Well, it's been a long time since I've seen somebody dive over the pile with the football, <laughs> hasn't it? It's been a long time. Mm -hmm. Gave up his body right there. So it is going to be second and goal from the three-yard line. 3.15 left to go here in the first half with Minster on top, 14 to nothing. And they are looking to extend that lead right here, right now. Niemeyer in the backfield. Niemeyer going to drop back, looks to throw, rolls to his right, throws it low at the pylon. That one's going to be incomplete, and a smart play by Niemeyer that time. There's a lot of traffic over there. He didn't want to completely throw that one away, but he threw it in a spot where if anybody was going to catch it, it was going to be his man. Or the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jalen Powell with nice pressure there, also forcing an early release. So I, you almost wonder, they've had success on this far sideline on the one-on-ones. They've been having Dylan Heitkamp out there. You know, if they're going to go to the air, you wonder if maybe they'll try the one-on-one. -on -one and no, they're actually going to send three wide receivers out here. We saw this on the opposite side where they tried the screen. They weren't able to get any yards on it. And this time, they're just going to keep it on the ground. Bergman's going to rush up the middle. He's going to be stopped after about a one-yard gain. And that'll bring up fourth and two, maybe a little less. And I don't think that we're going to see a field goal out of Minster here. They're going to try to punch this one into the end zone. And right when I say that, we have getting with the stop there for the Cardinals. Well, I think they're going they for it. I just think they're it. going yep. short yardage package here, partner. Yep. They just brought in some extra blockers. I think they're just going to try to push this one right up the middle. Swederman goes out wide. Niemeyer takes a snap, going to hand it off up the middle. Extra push, and that one is going to be good as the play worked to perfection. The C parted, and Minster goes in for another touchdown. Yeah, Keening got, Keening got him. It was just a little bit too late after he'd already crossed the plane. Justin Bergman gets the touchdown as he is the third different Wildcat to score here on the evening. And we see Caleb Kaus coming out for the extra point. Kaus waits for the snap. It's back, it's down, it's up, and it is good. So Minster in full control here tonight as they are on top 21 to nothing in this regional quarterfinal. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Speedway Lanes in New Bremen. Speedway Lanes in New Bremen brings family and friends together with bowling fun and great food for everyone. I'd also like to thank tonight's timeout sponsor, Burke Petroleum. But Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. Call them at 800-776-3097. So Minster going to kick it off one more time. 2.07 left to go here in the first half. As New Bremen right now on offense is still trying to find their identity now that their starting quarterback, Aaron Tiemann, has exited the game. Minster's kickoff this time a little bit longer. As they're going to bring it out, dances across. And he's going to get returned just past the 35-yard line. And his number 22, Brett Schaefer, brought it up for the Cardinals. 
Max Kadapke on the stop there for the Wildcats on the kickoff. So New Bremen with two minutes left to go, just trying to get something going on offense, looking for an answer. Whitlatch back out in the shotgun. He waits a snap. Officials right now having to get in position. It's a little bit of a delay here. It's going to be interesting to see what this coaching staff dials up here to kind of get things going and maybe just, just get a little bit of confidence back in this offense heading towards the locker room. Wedge hands this one off to Muther. Muther looking for some space. Minster does a great job stretching that one out. Sure and I did. think on top of the yards lost, there may be another penalty on top of that one. It's going to be holding. So it is going to go back. And actually, they're going to decline that one due to the loss of the yardage anyway. So it's going to be second and long. Yeah, I think Charlie Smeezing would like to have that one back. I just took him. I think he took, excuse me, a angle not quite conducive for him to make the stop, but he put enough pressure on that his teammates were able, excuse me, able to come up and make the stop. So now Whitlatch gonna hand this one off up the middle. And there's nothing going for New Bremen right now as right now you just kind of see Minster selling out. They don't have to try to protect about any, anything. There has been anything coming from that New Bremen offense. I think that is really concerning the Wildcats uh, defense as they take a Burke Petroleum timeout with a 151 left to go. It's going to be third and long for New Bremen, and they're thinking about maybe putting some more points on the board before halftime. You made a great point. They're just pinning their ears back right now. They realize that the ability to throw the ball between Teeman and and Whitlock right now, Whitlock hasn't proved himself he can throw the ball, so they might as well just load up the box and pin their ears back and go get them, and that's what they're doing right now. Yeah, and it, it is a big disservice to this new Bremen offense right now because they just don't have any way to stop the numbers that are getting thrown at them because they just don't have to keep anybody back in that pass protection. Right. They're going to have to find a way to get a little bit of respect back in that passing game or Minster's just going to continue to eat them up. You know, and we mean no disrespect to Whitlock. I mean, it, it, it's a situation where I don't think he really thought he was even going to see the field tonight. And yeah, to he, be put in this situation, it's tough for a young man. And absolutely. he's trying his best that he possibly can. But when you got all those black jerseys bearing down on you, it makes it difficult. Well, which that looks like he was going to try to go. This one's going to end up on the ground. And it looks like the Wildcats may have fallen on that one, waiting on a signal. And no, New Bremen is able to get that one back to maintain the possession. You know, you talked about the situation as we have another timeout getting called. Minster's going to take their second Burke Petroleum timeout. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. Contact them at 800-776-3097. Well, we talked about the position that Whitlatch has come in, and it's nothing against him. No, no. However, this new Bremen offense was built primarily around one player, Aaron Tiemann, and the skill sets that Aaron Tiemann brings to this team. When you're talking about what you lost with Aaron Tiemann coming out, he came into tonight with 824 yards in the air, 753 yards on the ground. He had scored 84 points for this team. The second leading scorer on this team was Rogan Mueller with 36. 12 rushing touchdowns. He did everything that mm -hmm. New Bremen needed. Yes. And when you're telling, when Pierce Whitlatch, okay, now you have to go in, you know, he do, he has to come in and he's trying to be Aaron Tiemann, and that's just not necessarily the skill set that he has. He may be built for a different type of offense, and it's really hard to change your offense on the fly. As New Bremen gets a nice punt that time, but Minster with a good return puts themselves in good position with 135 left to go. They're going to try to put some points on the scoreboard before we head to halftime. We're going to step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. 
So after the punt, Minster with pretty good field position here. As Niemeyer is going to try to lead one more scoring drive. He's going to drop back, just swings this one out. Smeezing looking for some space. Connor Smeezing works the sidelines, gets it up around near field or midfield, excuse me, before he is knocked out of bounds. So we saw, excuse me, we saw Justin Bergman have his opportunity in the backfield. And it was Connor Smeezing. And now here comes Bergman once again, checking back into the game. Nice job by Gabe Bornhorst, also Caleb Sharp, allowing that big gain right there for about six yards with their excellent fundamental blocking. Minster showing their versatility, going to a five wide. Going to let this one go. As a short pass that time brought in by Dylan Heitkamp. Doesn't get too much. Going to bring up third and five for the Wildcats. Nice play there by the junior, Owen Rindler. Solo tackle by that young man. Good job staying at home fundamentally. Disciplined. Stay. Minster staying in that five wide set. Going to look to go wide, splits it through the defense. What a throw and a great catch by Noah Sweeterman. But James Niemeyer does a great job of threading that through two defenders. Sweeterman sat down in the window, and that moves the sticks for another Busher Electric first down. Yeah, nice throw there. Krieg on the stop. Under a minute left to go. Minster in the hurry up. They're going to go deep one more time. Across the middle of the field, and this is in and out of the hands of Heitkamp. As Heitkamp, we've seen him have a couple of drops here in this quarter. And that one thrown a little bit behind him. But I'm sure if you asked him, he would feel like he could have caught that. But the clock does stop. 48 seconds left to go. Second and 10 for the Wildcats. As they are on New Bremen's 38-yard line. James Niemeyer has had an excellent first half. We've seen him get it done in the air. He's ran the RPO very well. We've seen him call his own number a couple of different times rushing. He's just controlled the game for him. You know, he's he's not been real flashy. He's just been very solid. Long pass going deep. And I think that that time Albers just got caught off guard. I don't think he thought that one was going to be coming. And then he kind of turned around. And Cole Albers is like, oh, it's coming down. But Niemeyer had no choice. He had to get rid of it. New Bremen did a nice job dialing up the blitz that time. And that's going to fall down harmlessly to the turf. A couple of seconds come off the clock. It's going to bring up third and 10. Officials resetting the play clock back up to 25. With 43 seconds left to go here in the half. Have the one-on-one -on -one matchup on the far sideline. We'll see if they try to dial up the one-on-one -on -one again. They have the size mismatch, but this time Niemeyer going to roll to his left. Going to let this one fly. Nice connection that time with number two, Cole Richard. And Richard gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 38 seconds left to go, but not before another Busher Electric first down. And that's big there, too, because they can save a timeout. Lowen Krieg run him out at the boundary. you got to believe, it, what, another five, six yards, the way they've been kicking extra points, they're going to put them in at least an opportunity for a field goal. I know they'd like to get six plus an extra point, but they're putting themselves in a position where they can at least attempt a three. Well, and here's the other thing, too. New Bremen got the opening kick to start this game, so Minster with an opportunity here. If they can put points on the board, they also get it back coming out of the locker room. So we'll see if New Bremen is able to hold them off the scoreboard or not. Sweeterman tries to go for the block. I think we're going to have a hold. This one's going to get thrown into the end zone. Cole Richard holds on to it for the touchdown. But we'll see if that one comes back as it looks like the Minster sideline's not acting like it was a flag. I could have swore I saw one fly, but maybe. Yeah, I didn't see, I did not see anything on the field. So it was clean, not sure what I saw. It looked like I saw a, a flag go out, but must not have. And a great pass and an even better catch in traffic that time by Cole Richard. Well, he dialed that up on the move. And I mean, he found a window there and it was perfect. So. That time, Caleb Kaus's kick, no good. It's going to fall just short of the post. 
and that's going to keep the score at 27 0. 30 seconds left to go here in the half. Minster in control. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdown sponsor, Speedway Lanes in New Bremen. Speedway Lanes in New Bremen brings family and friends together with bowling fun. Great food for everyone. So Cole Richard, the fourth different Wildcat to score a Speedway Lanes touchdown tonight. As has Minster in complete control as they are on top, 27 to nothing. They're going to kick it off to New Bremen with 30 seconds left to go. And you got to think that New Bremen right now is just going to go ahead and try to get into the locker room and try to find a way to regroup and find and hopefully find a game plan that will work to get this offense going in the second half. Well, they're not going to get it all back, you know, in bunches. They're just going to have to chip it away and, you know, try to try to get the thing down under 14 heading to that fourth quarter. But like you said, they're going to have to make, make some adjustments. I don't think the defense has played that bad. It's just been the unfortunate turnovers that's been the bugaboo because Minster's converted on them turnovers that – New Bremen has had here in this first half. So Pierce Whitlatch is back in the shotgun. They're not going to knee it. They're going to hand this one off up the middle. Nice yardage gained by Schaefer. Sure was. And New Bremen does not have to take another snap if they don't want to. We'll see what they have planned here with 10 seconds left to go. They don't seem to be in any hurry, so I think they're going to let this one run down and end the half. Sharp and Riddler on the stop there for the Wildcats. And that is exactly what happens as the clock strikes a zero. And Minster is in complete control here at Minster Memorial Field. They lead New Bremen 27-0 heading into halftime. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Minster Memorial Field. Tonight's instant replays are sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Gil, you know, New Bremen took that opening kickoff. They were able to pick up some yardage. Looked like maybe you, this might be a different game than what we saw a few weeks ago out of these two teams. But and then it after was. that. It was the first quarter, 0-0. Zero, zero, but then that <laughs> then second then quarter, quarter happened, and it was all Minster. Yeah, 27 unanswered points for Minster. Uh, personally, we need to thank Mr. Bruce Monin and Deb Monin for giving us halftime stats. Just some big you know, stats that stick out. Minster, 15 first downs, New Bremen, 1. Uh, through the air, Minster 15 of 22. Uh, New Bremen 2 of 3 with an interception. Offensive plays run. New Bremen a total of 17. 42 for Minster for 283 yards. And probably the big one here is time of possession. New Bremen 6 minutes and 42 seconds and Minster 17 minutes and 18 seconds. So that's those are the big numbers right now where we're sitting with a 27 to nothing lead by Minster. The other big storyline on the New Bremen side of things on the offense, starting quarterback Aaron Teeman went out, took a big hit right around the goal line on their second possession. We did not see him come back in as Pierce Whitlatch came in to take over from behind center. And unfortunately for Whitlatch, the offense just really could not adjust once he came into the game. So we'll see what kind of adjustments they made at halftime. But first, that defense is going to have to come out and try to see if they can't get a stop as Minster put a touchdown on the board prior to halftime. They're looking to do the same thing here coming out of the locker room. Noah Kelly and Heitkamp on the stop for New Bremen. Yeah, this is one where you got to try to force a three and out or a turnover. James Niemeyer comes out behind center for New Bremen, or excuse me, for Minster. In the first half, he was 15 of 22 for 204 yards through the air. 
He also had three touchdowns as well. Justin Bergman. I believe that's Bergman. No, it's actually Connor Schmusing. Excuse me. He started. He started the game back in the backfield. Found a lot of success as he rushed for. Evers he had on 10, the stop. 10 carries, 31 yards. But then we saw Justin Bergman come in, also have success. He had only eight carries, but managed 45 yards with what he had done as that Mincer offense pretty much was able to do whatever they wanted in the first half. Yeah, and then you mix in the ability to throw the football. That's a dangerous weapon if you're a Wildcat. Niemeyer going to drop back, looks to air it out, has a wide open receiver across midfield, going to continue running, just dragging along the defender. And a great job by Cole Albers. The big tight end has a big uh, big carry, big gain, and a, another Busher Electric first down. The big fella, as the PA announcer said, is six foot seven, 230 pounds, a sophomore. You know, and we're getting ready to start basketball season. Minster could be this, uh, one of the sleepers in the area with what they've got coming back if they can get Mr. Steffi healthy along with Richards and along with uh, Albers. They could have some big numbers this year in basketball. Niemeyer going to go deep. Has a receiver just out of his reach as he was trying to connect with Dylan Heitkamp. Heitkamp already has one touchdown reception here tonight. Had some space there, but unable to connect. Yeah, he was there, wasn't he? Just a little bit overthrown. You know, talking about Cole Albers, you know, Minster, they, they know how to grow good tight ends over here. Ooh. Not too many years removed from another fabulous tight end. Went on to have a, have a heck of a career down over in Tennessee. Which one? There was two of them, remember? There was two brothers. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. So, you know, Minster, a lot of success on that tight end. Uh, side of things, and you can see right there as Albers had the big game. As we have another pass this time, this is going to go incomplete. It's going to bring up third and ten for the Wildcats. As they had a couple of receivers in that area, and not sure if there's a little bit of a mix up that well, time. Well, I think Cole, Cole uh, Richard was the intended target, and I think he started to feel footsteps because he, he's going across the middle of the field in danger zone, and I just think he took his eye off the football, but that ball was definitely there real quick. Third down and 10 for the Wildcats. High camp is in motion, gonna go up the seam. Neymar gonna throw it back short. A great play design this time as Cole Richard was left all alone as he was coming back up the line of scrimmage, and he has a big gain for another Busher Electric first down. Krieg on the stop, Johnny Heitkamp. I'll tell you what, you know, how, how, how big is that? You know, he just had one fall off his hands, and they went right back to him from a confidence standpoint. You know, if you're Cole Richard, you know, he made a big play right there, and, you know, credit the offensive coordinator and Coach Whiting for going right back to Richard. So Minster, they're on the move again. Niemeyer gonna drop this one. And just off of the outstretched fingertips of Cole Albers, as he knew the sideline was coming, he was trying to keep his feet in, the, in play and just could not bring that one in. Niemeyer had a nice ball, just a little bit too much on it. Yeah, he tried to tippy toe along that sideline. Second and goal from the nine yard line for Minster. Niemeyer back in the shotgun. Bergman and Schmeezing in the backfield. Niemeyer gonna go to the air, gonna lay this one out. Charlie Schmeezing trying to gain a few extra yards. He's gonna get taken down right at the three yard line. Brings up third and goal from the three. So even, Tangement on the stop, excuse me. So even though Minster has had success on the ground and that old line has done a nice job of making holes, they've put the ball in Niemeyer's hands here on this drive and letting him make plays. They just quietly go about their business through the Wildcats. Niemeyer, gonna hand this one up the middle. 
Great fake that time as two different Cardinal defenders followed Niemeyer thinking he kept that ball. But Connor Smeezing runs right up the gut, gets it in for another Minster touchdown. Connor Smeezing now with his second Speedway Lanes touchdown all the, the game. Caleb Kaus is going to come out for the extra point. Kaus missed his last kick. This one is going to be up, and that one's no good as well as it looked like there was some trouble with the snap and the hold. So Minster not able to connect on the last two extra points, but they are still on top of 33 to nothing. Minster is going to be kicking it back off to New Bremen when we come back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdown sponsor, Speedway Lanes in New Bremen. Speedway Lanes in New Bremen brings family and friends together with bowling fun and great food for everyone. Tonight's premier sponsor for New Bremen is Hemelgarn Real Estate. Hemelgarn Real Estate is proud to be tonight's premier sponsor for the New Bremen Cardinals. Make your next move with a name you trust, Hemelgarn Real Estate. Yeah, thank you very much to all the sponsors throughout the season. You know, we can't make this possible without your generous donation. Also, special thank you to Mr. Josh Kloon, Athletic Director here at Minster, Austin Kaler, the principal, and Superintendent Josh Meyer, as well as the coaching staff, Coach Whiting, for their hospitality tonight, hosting us down here. Always fun environment to come down here and host a game. The people treat us so, so, so good. And special thanks to uh, Coach Schmidt from New Bremen for getting this, the stats necessary for this coverage. As you see, the snap was a little high that time. As New Bremen has a new quarterback out there. As that is Oh, we'll get it here for you in a second. Rogan Muther, does that sound right? Number 15? Yeah, that is correct. Roman Muther, he is the new cornerback for the Cardinals. Took that snap up the middle. Was able to pick up about three yards on the carry. This one's going to be handed off. New Bremen not able to get anything on that carry as Minster closed the holes quickly. Mr. Schulze right there, 6'1", 300-pound interior defensive lineman with a big stop, three-year letterman. So now New Bremen finds themselves in a third and seven. And honestly, this is the first time that they've even had positive yardage in quite some time. The last couple possessions, they found themselves getting pushed backwards. They had some penalties. Plays were blown up by Minster. So we'll see if they're able to pick up a first down here. They haven't had one since the first quarter. And delay of game as Muther lost track of where he was with the play clock. That's going to be a five-yard penalty. So a delay of game call going to cost New Bremen as they are now behind the sticks and that positive yards that they had picked up all but erased. And Nate. We both coach long enough to know there's something positive that's going to come out of this for New Bremen. You know, Teeman being a senior, these two kids that are coming in, sophomores and juniors at the quarterback position, for that matter, they're going to gain valuable experience. You know, it's tough to be placed in this position, but also the valuable that you can't get anything more than experience. Either. Let's this one go. His receiver falls down, and Connor Sneezing is there for the impressive interception as he had to tip it to himself. And Minster is going to take over at their own 45-yard line. Yeah, they tried to hit Zeller down this near side on a streak route in great defensive position right there. The ball was a little bit underthrown. But like you said, that's a great play there by Connor Schmeezing, the junior, five foot six, making that interception. So with a 33-point difference, we are at a running clock right now. So the clock is running. They are 520 left to go here in the third. 
Because this one looks right now like it is in the firm hands of the Wildcats. We'll see how they choose to, to play out here with Neymar still in the shotgun. Going to hand this one off to Smeezing. Big hole up through the line as Justin Bergman, excuse me, had come into the game. He takes that carry, picks up another Busher Electric first down. Busher Electric is a full-service electrical contractor servicing the area communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electric needs. And New Freeman wants to take a timeout and talk about it as Minster was trying to go quickly. So the Cardinals will take the timeout. We will as well and be back on WOSN. Back tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Burke Petroleum. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. Contact them at 800-776-3097. As here's a nice run from the Minster Wildcats, number 32, John Keller, the senior, making some nice moves and picking up another Busher Electric first down coming out of the New Bremen Burke Petroleum timeout as Minster just continues to move the ball up the field. Well, and the men up front are just doing a great job controlling the line of scrimmage and opening up huge holes right now, allowing those running backs to just get big chunks of yards. So we also have a new quarterback in for Minster as they have made some wholesale changes. Number four, Taylor Fancher. He is the freshman. He will be taking the rest of the snaps from here on out, I'd imagine, for the Wildcats. Zeller and Rindler on the stop for the Bremen. Nice job by them. Got a couple. Going to get rewarded for some TFLs right there by those two young men. So lots of changes out there for the Wildcats. We'll try to get those to you as those players' numbers are called. Fancher. Back, takes the snap, going to hand it off to Keller. Keller going to work through the middle, hops over some defenders, picks up a few yards before he is taken down. Got up near the original line of scrimmage, going to bring up third and long for the Wildcats. You know, I'm not surprised to see Minster go ahead and take some guys out. You know, Even though we're still in the third quarter, we are in a running clock, and Minster and it's this, it's this way for every team, not, you know, I mean, as you move through the well, tournament, he, every game is harder than the next. But this Minster team has to go against Marion Local next week. They are winning big tonight at halftime. They are up by almost 60. Obviously, when as you're watching this, we'll already know the final of that game. But Minster knows what they have ahead of them, and there's nothing wrong with trying to get ready for that one already. Well, and I also think it's a respect factor of all the coaches in the MAC. I mean, he could leave his starters in right now. The game's in control 33 to nothing. One, you're risking an injury, but two, the ultimate respect that the coaches have for one another within the league, and especially towards Coach Smith. Coach Smith has done a phenomenal job at New Bremen, and those state championships have a lot to show for it. And it's just one of those nights where they're just not playing to their par level, but that goes to the credit of Minster and their game plan and their coaching staff and, and, and the kids tonight for their execution. So now Minster is going to take the Burke Petroleum timeout prior to the play clock running out. We're going to step aside, and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lionel, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So Minster takes the Burke Petroleum timeout. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. Give them a call at 1-800-776-3097. So a late substitution comes in for Minster as they are going to run a play here on fourth down. Fancher are going to drop back. Throws that one high, almost picked off by New Bremen, but it's going to be incomplete. There is a flag on the field. It's going to be holded against Minster. That one's going to be declined, and New Bremen will have the turnover on downs. 1.15 and counting here in the third quarter as New Bremen 
just trying to see if maybe they can't get something going. You know, it's never easy when your season ends, but you want to at least try to have it end with some good things, with some good memories. And, you know, there it was no easy task. Once Aaron Tiemann went down, though, the adjustments that the offense had to make, at least here so far, has just seemed insurmountable. Well, it's been the turnovers, you know. It's just been, you know, the inconsistency with the turnover, which led to points. And a team like Minster, you can't fall behind on. And, and they fell behind, and they could just never recover. A great run that time by Rogan Muther. That is a, a Busher Electric first down, only the second first down for New Bremen here tonight. They had one on their opening drive back in the first quarter, and it has taken some time, but they finally got some things going on offense. Rogan Muther back in the, stop, in the shotgun, takes a snap, going to hand this one off. Schaefer looking for some space. He gets hit after about a three-yard gain and driven backwards. And trying to see who that appeared to be on the tackle. It appeared to be number 26, 25, Justin Bergman. So that is going to bring the third quarter to a close. One more left to go here at Minster Memorial Field. The Wildcats in control, 33-nothing. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Tonight's first downs are brought to you by Busher Electric, a full-service electrical contractor servicing the area communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electric needs. So New Bremen comes out trying to go to the air. That one's going to be incomplete. And probably fortunate if that one's completed is most likely going to be dropped for a loss anyway. You got to give a lot of credit to this New Bremen squad, Gil. You know, they came in. This was going to be a tough game. They already knew it. You know, they had a tough game against this Minster squad just a few weeks ago. You work, you put that game plan in place, and then on your second drive, it all goes out the window when your starting quarterback goes down. But these kids have kept fighting. Well, I mean, you look at the second quarter, that's what, you know, got them behind the eight ball, the 27 unanswered points. And, you know, I mentioned earlier that they just couldn't recover from it, but you can't fault their effort and the preparation they put in. And, I mean, this is an adjoining school district, and these kids know one another. Uh, they probably have relation, you know, within both school districts. And it's been a very clean played game. It's just tonight they're getting beat by a better ball club. And, and, it's, and it's showing, you know, by time of possession and on the scoreboard. You saw Rogan Muther with a long carry to pick up the Busher Electric first down. This one's going to be out of his reach on the snap. He's able to gather it in. Great job recovering as he moves up that sideline. And what looked like could have been a disastrous play, Rogan Muther turns into a Busher Electric first down. But we do have some flags on the field. I think those are just ball markers. Yeah, I think you're right. I got caught listening to the PA and um, – it, it was. It was the orange bags that went down, which just showed that they had a, a fumble. But Mueller does a great job oh, he staying did, concentrating, he? picking that one up, and picking up a big gain out of it. Yeah, got him a first down with that effort. Another bad snap, able to gather that one in. He's just going to go up the middle, protects the ball, and gets himself about two, three yards. I think it's Dylan Heitkamp. You mentioned that these two schools awfully close to one another, these communities. You go to a lot of places and you kind of have those, you know, territorial rivalries just based on their locations. But, I mean, this takes it almost to another level. I mean, there are people sitting in this stand tonight who could have potentially walked from their home in New Bremen to the stadium oh, yeah. here at That's Minster. How close, I, I mean, mean, these guys are right in each other's backyard. So there always is a little extra when these two teams get together, no matter what the sport is. You know, I always enjoy coming down here, whether it be for football and or basketball. Either does go to the air that time, has a completion. Nice pick up on second down to make it third and short for the Cardinals. You know, and you look at the success that these schools have had in other sports and the state championships, excuse me, that they've 
output, whether it be individually or team. The other takes that one. That one's high, hands it off up the middle. Schaefer fighting for the extra yardage. And he's going to be taken down right around the 15-yard line, but not before he picks up a Busher Electric first down. Yeah, it sure was. Jacob Kelly, partner, I think, was the ball handler on that one, number 25. Oh, excuse me, you're right. Yep, as Kelly got gets a carry. Got a first down out of it. First and 10 for the Cardinals from the 15-yard line. Here there goes the air, is going to swing it out to Kelly. Kelly makes a move, tries to go to the sideline, but a nice open field tackle that time by the Wildcats. Dylan Wellman coming up there, shedding the tackle, got his hands up, avoided it. Nice open field tackle by the junior. Clock continues to run, under eight left to go in this one. There's some phenomenal coaches in the MAC, and they really, really teach fundamentals. And you can see every time you come watch a MAC game, fundamentals are being taught on both teams on both sides of the ball. Muther runs to the right, and he is met by a host of Wildcats that take him down. He did not have a loss of yardage. He only got back to the line of scrimmage. That's going to bring up third and 10 for New Bremen. So what looked like a promising drive, and as the offense finally started clicking a little bit, has sputtered here a little bit inside the red zone. Dylan Heitkamp right there with a nice open field tackle. Muther takes a shotgun snap. He's going to drop back, decides to go up the middle, calls his own number. Going to be a foot race to the outside, trying to get to that pylon, and he's going to get forced out, and we'll see if he was just short or if he was in. And it, they stopped him just short, and then there was a flag. You wonder if there was a little extracurricular in there as they had a big pile of both players. We'll see what the call is. I think there may just have been a little bit of talking going on right there. Yeah, he was close, but boy, what an effort that young man made. And it's going to be a dead ball unsportsmanlike against New Bremen and Minster. So offsetting, and they're going to have to redo the down. So a big gain by Mueller taken off the board after – Negating penalties. Yeah, you got to believe something was said because, like you said, I don't think there was any physical extracurricular activity that took place. But the official went over to Coach uh, Schmidt, and you know he didn't he didn't say anything to the officials. So that could potentially be a big penalty, as you know, New Bremen, you know, with under six left to go. Don't think they're going to have enough time to come back in this one, but you know that they don't want to be held off the scoreboard. And that run by Muther got them right on the doorsteps of the end zone. We'll see if they're able to repeat here as Muther going to throw this out wide. Schaefer makes the catch, and he has to fight for some extra yardage. He does get across that first down uh, marker. So a Busher electric first down for the Cardinals as they are going to be inside the five-yard line. I'm trying to see who was that Schaefer or was that uh, 25? Was that Kelly? I'm not quite sure, partner, to be honest with you. I was looking to see if Schaefer was in the game, and I didn't see him. Anyway, that what a heck of a run right there. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was him or not. I thought I'd heard some other um, up here in the press box. But, yeah, I'm not positive either, so. Not sure if that, who was on that reception, but they did a nice job with the catch and run. And now here's Muther as he is going to make it through and get into the end zone for New Bremen to get them on the scoreboard finally. Nice job by that young man. He's, you know, he really, that series, it wasn't with so much with his arm, but his ability to run the football. And he found his way to the end zone. Nice job by the New Bremen Cardinals right there. Rogan Muther does a great job leading the Cardinals down the field. Calls his own number as he gets into the end zone 
for the Speedway Lanes touchdown. The extra point is up, and it is good to make it 33-7. The new Bremen Cardinals won't be shut out tonight as they get their first score and points. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's premier sponsor for New Bremen is Hemelgarn Real Estate. Hemelgarn Real Estate is proud to be tonight's premier sponsor for the New Bremen Cardinals. Make your next move with a name you trust, Hemelgarn Real Estate. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Speedway Lane. Speedway Lanes in New Bremen brings family and friends together with bowling fun and great food for everyone. As New Bremen is going to send this one back as they got it over the head of the returner for Minster. A little trickery there. I think Minster thought maybe New Bremen would go for the onside kick. So everybody was playing up a little bit. But either way, Minster able to fall on it, maintains possession. 4-12 left to go here in the game. That last score by New Bremen does bring the running clock to a stop. So we will be back to regular clock, at least uh, for the foreseeable future. So we'll see. If I'm, I'm sure we're going to have the same changes. I don't think that Minster will try to run any of the regulars back on, but we'll see who comes out. And no, they're going to keep uh, the reserves on, let them get some valuable playing time as Taylor Fancher, the freshman, is back at quarterback. Somebody's sneaking in, huh? Yeah. Late receiver running on for Minster. Answer takes a snap, going to hand it off. As Minster just tries to run it up the middle right now, just into clock eating mode. Gain of about three or four on that carry to bring up second and roughly six. Gavin Dickey on the stop. Freshman getting some minutes for. New Bremen, along with his other teammates, Dylan Wente. So now Fancher, back in the shotgun still, waits for snap. Take that, hand it off. They're going to try the other side. He pulls it back. Now he's going to throw it. And they're going to say down as the receiver had to go down on a knee to bring that one in. So a nice athletic play by Fancher that time on the RPO, pulls it back. Looked like he was going to run, decides to throw it at the last second and gets the completion, but a minimal game that time. And it's going to be third and seven for Minster. Yeah, he was quick with it. He got rid of it real fast on that RPO. So Fancher comes running back into the huddle. And I'll tell you what, you cannot take away the importance of reps like this, especially for a freshman quarterback, as the play clock just gets it off in time as it was going down to zero. Fancher makes that completion. A nice run on what looked like maybe end up being a delay of game. The Minst uh, Minster makes the most of it that time as Fancher gets the snap off just in time, completes the pass. But it's going to be taken down just shy of the first down marker. Jalen Powell on the stop for New Bremen. Two minutes left to go in this one. Minster faces a fourth and one. Fancher letting his offense get set as the receivers move around. He's going to take the snap, hands this one off. Minster just going to work it up the middle. And they get the first down as they pick up another Busher Electric first down, and that may seal it there as Minster right now, I don't think will have to do, they may have to take two more snaps at the most. That's going to bring this one to a close. Pile on the stop along with Sam Homan. A minute 20 left to go. Fancher in the backfield. Takes a snap, hands it off. 
And there, Minstered moves it up for some positive yardage on the left side. So Minster's going to close this one out. Just a minute left to go. They'll take the victory 33-7 to over New Bremen. And a little bit of a different score than we saw a couple of weeks ago, but at the end of the day, it really was domination by Minster. And they are going to have their hands full next week as they will move on to play the Marion Local Flyers. And, Gil, that's going to be another great matchup as, you know, it seems that I, as you move through the tournament, round after round, you see those Mac on Mac games. And you know what? That's why they play the game, right? You know, teams are dropping, one seeds are dropping, two seeds are dropping. Yeah, it's going to be a heck of a matchup. It really is. It will. It'll be interesting to see where they play the game because, like you said earlier, everything next week goes to neutral sites. Yep, everything now being played on Friday nights through the entire length of the playoffs. Yeah, neutral, stay tuned. Neutral site games begin next week as well as this will be the last handoff as the game as Bishop gets stopped, but that will bring this one to a close. Minster knocks off New Bremen. We'll step aside and be back to talk about it on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's premier sponsor for the New Bremen Cardinals is Hemelgarn Real Estate. Hemelgarn Real Estate is proud to be tonight's premier sponsor for the New Bremen Cardinals. Make your next move with a name you trust, Hemelgarn Real Estate. Welcome back to Memorial Field here at Minster High School where the Minster Wildcats continue to march on as they will move into the regional semifinal game where they will play Marion Local, a team they are all too familiar with. But before we talk about that matchup, you got to give New Bremen credit. They faced a, a lot of hurdles here tonight. You know, we talked about it a lot, but, I mean, I cannot be overstated what losing Aaron Tiemann so early in this oh, game meant to the Cardinals. You know, he's been, a, he's been one of those kids that's been around the program for a lot of years and his athleticism, you know, both with his arm and with his legs, and for him to go out early in the contest, because they played a well over first quarter, zero to zero. It's that, you know, when he went out with the injury and then a couple – Crucial turnovers allowed Minster the short field, and they just converted. They quietly went about their business. You know, it wasn't anything flashy, just solid. You know, Niemeyer did a great job, you know, running the show for them. And, you know, he didn't miss a beat. And, you know, the defense came and they played. You know, they give up the touchdown late into the game. But Coach Whiting, you know, had his, had his reserves end of the game get them some valuable minutes, but uh, you know that you know, like you said, it's going to be an interesting matchup. Congratulations to New Bremen and Coach Smith. They do things the right way. The kids play hard. They played hard tonight. They just run into a better team with with Minster. And New Bremen is going to end their season five and seven. And not quite the year that they have been used to, but this Cardinal team has had a lot of success lately, and you know that they are going to go into the offseason looking to get this thing going in the right direction. They've had a big upset last week as they knocked off uh, the, I believe, three seed uh, to make it here. So New Bremen, nothing to be ashamed of. A, a great postseason run does come to an end tonight. And this Mr. Wildcat team can't say enough good things about him. You saw James Niemeyer play a fantastic game, control things both in the air and on the ground. They got a great game out of Connor Schmeezing. They got a great game out of Justin Bergman. They had things going all over the field. Noah Sweeterman had a great game uh, through the air. They had four different Wildcats uh, find the end zone tonight. And that offensive line held up tonight, gave Niemeyer all sorts of time. And it was really just a dominating game on both sides of the ball. Well, yeah, you know, the, the, I'm going to speak on the other side of the ball because I'll tell you, they had some huge turnovers that they forced and created both on the on fumbles and on interceptions, but they just wouldn't let, you know, New Bremen get into a rhythm, whether it would was, you know, the starting quarterback team and, or if it went to somebody else. They just took New Bremen out of their rhythm of what they wanted to do and – Put New Bremen, you know, behind the eight ball, so to speak, with a couple early touchdowns and turned it over to the defense, and defense was just solid. 
you know, I would like to know, you got the stat sheet there, just what the time of possession turned out to be. Final time of possession ended up favoring Minster, no surprise, 28-23 to 1937. There you go. So that's almost a quarter more of possession football displayed by the Wildcats. So we are just about finished here in Minster. like to thank our sponsors one final time. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts, Busher Electric, Speedway Lanes, Burke Petroleum, and Hemelgarn Real Estate. We appreciate you guys being on board with us and making our broadcast possible. I'd like to thank tonight's crew. Yeah, Jake and Nick running, or excuse me, <laughs> Jacob and Zach running things for me. Getting my crews mixed up here tonight. Uh, but they, they set everything else up for us. They do a great job. We appreciate everything that they do. We get the easy job, Gil. We get to we watch football. We got through it. That's right. We get to watch you know, we football. Had some we mixed get to watch it. <laughs> uh, well, maybe not the cleanest one we've ever had no. together, buddy, but anytime we get to share the booth together, I am happy to do that. And I appreciate your patronage well, I appreciate, tonight. I appreciate game working with you. with you, and I love working with you guys and for the station. And again, shout out, you know, to, to Minster for their hospitality, Josh Clooney, Josh Meyer, uh, as well as uh, Austin Kaler, the principal, and both coaching staffs for getting us the stats. It makes our job a little bit easier. And, you know, like I said, the hospitality is unbelievable when we come down in this area. And, I always look forward to coming down here. So best of luck to Minster as well as the other teams still in the playoffs. And, you know, hats off to New Bremen. You know, they played behind the eight ball, but they have nothing to be ashamed of. There's a lot of teams out there who wished to be in those 16 spots, and they made it to week 12. That wraps it up for, here, for us here at Minster High School. One final time, the Minster Wildcats come away with the victory. They knock off New Bremen 33-7 and move on to the regional semifinals next week against Marion Local. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.